I'm racer's Marshall Pruitt. We just finished qualifying for the Firestone Grand Prix of Monterey. Who do we have on pole? The person we all expected, Fro Felix Rosenquist. Look at that. Bit of a home run shot here, at least on pole for Aaron McLaren, his last race for them. A really amazing qualifying session to look at here. And normally you just get my ugly mug, but oh no, you get you get a much prettier mug joining me. Who do we have? V! Jack Harvey, <laughs> all caps, Jack Harvey. Brother, we got Felix on pole. Yeah. New lap record by 1.1 seconds. Yep. You've been watching up close all around this track as a current IndyCar driver who's been here and done well, whether it was in Indy Lights and IndyCar as well. Yep. Tell me about seeing this track and drivers bathed in grip. The thing everybody's seeing this whole weekend is new surface, it's so fast, which it absolutely is. Corners that seem like they will work before, and still work now, they're just significantly quicker. The interesting thing, talking around the paddock, Although the whole track has got more grip, it's quite a narrow line. Yeah. So if you're going offline a little bit, it seems to have a pretty heavy repercussion. That's probably the observation that comes up the most, but it's been wild. How many red flags there have been this weekend so far? I'd be interested to see what happens in the race. Physical toll as well is something we'll talk about in a moment. We had Felix lay down that lap. Great lap. Almost done, right? Very end of the fast six. There's about a minute left of the rest of the players out there. Is anyone gonna knock him down? Joseph Newgarden put up a good lap, but pitted a little bit early. We had Alex Pillow running out there. We had Scott Dixon. We had Scott McLaughlin. We had Christian Lungard. McLaughlin comes close, close. but not close enough. Very and close. yet again, RLL team, you know very well with Christian Lungard right there. Yuri Vips, really impressive in P7, I believe. Tell me about this, because when we get not only a new track surface, Jack, yep. but this hyper pole battle, yeah, right, where everyone's right. within no time. Yeah. This is a, a fan's dream. It absolutely is, mate. And I think what was, I was listening to Felix earlier talking about tire prep, and I think that really might have been what sealed his pole position today. Tell folks what that is. So basically, it's how quickly you can activate the tire, right? How it, quickly you can get heat in it, but also just how quickly you can really push the tire and lean on it, because there's a difference between core tire temp, surface tire temp. He said he kind of just went out and got on it, and maybe he just, maximize more grip of the tire sooner instead of building heat slowly and uh, I mean Scott is so fast in qualifying as well and that gap for pole today is what we all love about IndyCar racing also just racing period uh, I gotta admit it sucks being here just kind of watching I don't like him standing here but we love him nonetheless still a great qualifying to watch and in terms of uh, you know the, the top six I was so happy that Fro was on pole uh, you know, with even McLaren, it's going to be his final race. It just there's a, a feel-good factor in that for him, for the team. You know, I just wish them good success tomorrow. Let's talk about some of those who might not be going to bed super happy tonight. Their crews, some of which we've already seen a lot of IndyCar crews leaving. We have. But some who have work to do to find things setup-wise. We have a morning practice session, so there's one last chance to get the little wrong things right. But Andretti Autosport stood out to me as a surprise. Colton Herta, a rocket throughout the weekend. Nowhere near being fast enough. Groschamp and similar. What were some of the surprises maybe in the not happy direction? I mean, honestly, I think you already kind of hit the big nail on the head. The whole Andretti camp, truthfully. You know, they've been so fast all weekend. And again, just talking around the paddock, I think people felt like they had speed that they hadn't shown in practice. So maybe that masked a little bit, but I mean, a Herter at Laguna Seca, I mean, it just feels like it's going to be at least in the fight for pole. He was quickest yesterday, I think, right? And whew, I don't know, just that was probably the biggest takeaway in terms of some people at the back. Still seeing MSR maybe struggling a, t a little bit. I didn't. I think Elio ended up maybe in the in the gravel, like he maybe yeah. just gone a little wide. And we touched on that on how narrow the grip is. Pato Ward as well, Felix's teammate. Felix had a great performance for Aaron McLaren. The rest, not so much. Pato, one of many this weekend, it caught out by not the car that wasn't exactly perfect. Spun, car was okay, but again, one of these qualifying sessions where whatever it, you might have thought was going to happen beforehand, blown out of the water. I gotta say, I thought the I thought the Fast 12 was quite an unusual group when you start looking at everybody. Uh, Marcus Ericsson not had, didn't have an awesome qualifying either. 
Uh, I don't know if that first group maybe seemed to be a bit more interrupted by that red flag that seemed to really hinder people. Whether it changed the grid a lot, I'm not sure. Um, I, it, one of the things I'm excited about for the race tomorrow is normally they're going to say it's very high day. But this new track group, it actually might go the other way. It might just keep getting quicker and quicker. So it'll be interesting to see how those strategies play out. But if there's a guy for the race I'd be excited about watching, it's probably Marcus Ericsson. He nearly always moves forward in the race. So not entirely sure exactly where he qualified. I know he didn't get transfer, so he might be my sleeper for highest position gain tomorrow. Wow. Yeah. 95 laps, I believe, which I think is going Physical. to cool. Oh, that should exhaust people. Let's close on two topics. Yeah. You're here, uh, yeah, not yeah. just because you're a fan of motor racing. Yeah. This isn't the first IndyCar race you've been to since you and RLL parted ways, but you're here talking, meeting, trying to create opportunities for yourself. You're not the only driver here doing that, yeah. but it's important that you are because it shows everyone how serious you are about getting back putting yourself in the right position to show us what you did for so many years. Tell folks about that side because you're trying to observe, learn, build relationships, develop other ones you have, but you're here trying to make the best 2024 possible for you. Tell folks about that. I mean, literally, we're trying to do everything you said. We're trying to see what opportunities might be there, how we might be able to fit into them, and truthfully, just what they look like, you know, who you can see the confirmed drivers, so probably people can figure out which teams we're talking to and you know where might have a seat and ultimately at this point I think the last few years what I've really realized is it's it's just about fitting in with your environment and then being able to really make the most of it I actually just bought a townhome in Indy so I mean I'm, I'm committed to making this successful if anyone doesn't really know my story you know even getting full-time took a few partial seasons but you know, I, I love this. You know, I love racing in America. I love living here. I think just getting to do this period, we've chatted about it so many times. It's just such an unbelievable thing to do. Uh, you know, I love my life. I wish the professional side of it was a little better, but all we can do is come and work and I'm prepared to do the work and hopefully there's a, a team where I can slot into and have some success next year. One of the things I've loved about this kid since he got here, British racing driver, doesn't come from super wealth, having to fight for whatever he's gotten and has shown, right, through success and wins and all kinds of great stuff. So he, he's not unaccustomed to having to work and fight for whatever he's got. So this is a setback, but this isn't the end of his story. Fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> Let's close on one other thing. So you and others are hoping to arrange a test or whatever it is with teams just to try and uh, get some forward traction there. Heard one thing in the paddock since late yesterday and today that's interesting. Keep hearing our friends at Ed Carpenter Racing might be planning to go out and test at Barber Motorsports Park maybe towards the end of the month. And where that's unique, as someone who did mighty darn good in Indy Lights, I keep hearing the kid who should be winning the Indy Lights Championship in the NXT tomorrow, Christian Rasmussen, keep hearing he is going to be testing with Carpenter. Spoke with uh, team general manager Tim Broyles. He didn't mention any names. He just said we have a list, so that's normally what yeah. they tell you, which is good on him. The one that I've heard, and I think you've heard as well, which is really intriguing. Again, no confirmation, but it's what we keep hearing. F2 champion Felipe Drugovic. Drugovic maybe. coming over to maybe test? That'd be insane, Jack. So maybe give us some closing thoughts on that before we bring in Gavin Ward, and then hey, there's Christian Rasmussen himself. We certainly have an influx, Jack, of F2 drivers who certainly love racing in America. Yeah. That's got to make your job even harder to try and find a new home, knowing that there's younger kids saying, no, old man, I want your job, and oh, you're still no. a young kid. I like to think that I'm still youthful. Yeah. Uh, I think that, that pull from Europe, from F2, F3, into America has always been there. I think it's, IndyCar's just such a great racing series right now, and I think more people are seeing it uh, you know i think christian lungard's probably the, the most recent guy who's made that transition really work uh, i mean ultimately it's a tale as old as time there's more drivers than there are seats available uh, i'm sure for uh Djokovic if he comes over i mean barber's a, a, a european style yeah. track i'm sure it's one he'd go well at you know i think uh, christian rasmussen's done a really great year you know he absolutely deserves a, a minimum a test in an indy car I hope I wish him good luck tomorrow and see hopefully if he can uh, wrap it up but 
that, that merry-go-round of you know how the next six weeks are going to go is uh, it's a stressful one for everybody and never been one to like be a downer on it I mean they're all great drivers I'm sure everyone's deserving in their own different way hopefully what we bring to the table is a little bit of experience I know a lot of the tracks and I mean, outside of that, we just hope that the team maybe just leans towards Jack Harvey, so we'll see. I like that. We got uh, Jack Drogovic, uh, Christian Harvey, whatever we need to call him. <laughs> uh, give him a call, put this kid back in the car. It's where he belongs. Appreciate you, Thank you spending some time with us, Jack. Let's roll in our friends from Errol McLaren, and then we will say farewell to Saturday. We might even do a little Sunday morning video, get you ready for the final race of the year and so much of what's about to happen. Billy Vincent Yu is Felix Rosenquist's race strategist, brother in arms, so happy for you. You told him, hey, let's make sure they know we're here, they miss us. So tell me about this, brother, knowing that not only is this Felix's last weekend in that number six car, it's yours as well. I mean, it's a bit bittersweet. I mean, I was, Paul is awesome. I just am so happy for Felix and, uh, you know, the team as a whole, really, but the six car group, we've been, We've been knocking at the door for some, some great things for the last two years. And for one thing or another, sometimes it has had, we've had some ups, but we've also had a lot of downs. So uh, to be able to uh, at least start closing out this weekend at the pointy end is, is uh, I'm a loss for words. It's, it's awesome. And it's, it's cool to see Felix just happy and driving with a, a clear head. He's got no worries. He knows what he's doing next year. Podium last week, right? This yeah. fight coming out of him at the end of the season, right time, right momentum for the new team he's going to. Yeah, that's good for, the, good for them. You know, they're, they're, <laughs> they're getting a strong driver. We all know that. Uh, but uh, I'm just really happy for the, the six car crew as a, as a whole. We've been so tight knit and uh, a lot of new guys that are new to this sport on that car. and. Uh, and this is this is really cool. You know, two poles this year on a on a, on a speedway and a, and, a, and a road course, and with the new surface and track record and all that good stuff, it, that's awesome. Gavin Ward, I don't know if it means anything, <laughs> but I said we're going to go down to Felix Rosenquist's pit because I want to talk to him after qualifying because I feel like he's going to do well. I don't know if I had pole position in mind. But tell me about this, especially with Fro, who's such a big part, a huge heart of your program. Yeah. Uh, look, if nothing else, we can say a send-off pole is a great way to uh, to go into Sunday. Absolutely. I mean, all along with with Felix, um, we just want what's best for him, and we want we wanted to come into this race and send him off in the best way possible. So we got today done, and let's get it done tomorrow. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy. It's, you can see the excitement in the team. Everyone's everyone's pumped. So. So Gavin runs Aero McLaren, which is great, but this guy is race engineer supreme, big old technical brain behind those Canadian locks of his. Tell me about what you're seeing and hearing and looking at data and such about all this just pounds and pounds of grip that's amazing here in this new surface. As an engineer, you have to be looking at what's coming back from your cars going, man, this looks like fun. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's fun to watch for one thing, but this this track has always kind of been tick the boxes for me personally. With like what my my favorite types of tracks are, tracks that reward commitment and punish mistakes. But like with the repave and the speeds coming up, it's like that on drugs. <laughs> so, wow! So that's been awesome. But you know, also it's it is quite different. I mean, a different tire, but really more important than a different tarmac makes the tires work very differently. Um, so we've seen that, you know, last year you could maybe get one lap out of a set of tires in the day. Then you have a big drop off. You know, here it's like actually it's harder to get them in and like it rewards really pushing the tire. Whereas before you could really overcook it. So yeah. definitely different. Tell us about this Felix kid who's moving on to a new opportunity to a new team, but nonetheless, Texas, big crazy brave speed required. Pole position for Fro. Here again. Everyone pushing to within an inch of their lives. Pole again. What is it about this type of track that fits this little pint-sized suite? Yeah, this one's. He's, this is clearly a track he's taken to uh, right from the get-go. Right, even in his Ganassi days, he was he was mega quick here. So uh, he's got a few tricks up his sleeve when it comes to putting a lap together around this place. Um, but yeah, you know, a lot of people put a foot wrong and he didn't. And that's the, I think that's the the key here. Let's close before we get run over and killed by a bunch of Porsches. <laughs> Uh, there's worse ways to die, Gav. <laughs> hey, your team's been crazy impressive this year. A lot of great Saturdays. Still trying to have an amazing Sunday. Get your first win. I'm not asking you to predict anything. Let's step over here and just do the smart thing. But 
Give me the thoughts and feelings going into Sunday. You have some good cars. Qualifying wasn't perfect for all of your entries, yeah. but what's the, the feeling? You think tomorrow could be a good day? Yeah, I mean, historically being on pole here is a good thing. So it got that bit done, uh, but by no means is it straightforward. Um, you know, I think it'd be interesting to see what people do on the tire, tire choice here, because uh, I think that's not straightforward at all. Um, we're getting laid around here, but... <laughs> But I mean, really, we just, that's been the, you know, the key, the key for us is we got to execute. We got to execute on Sunday. It's not really been our, I'd say quite our strength, but we know we're capable of it. So excited to get another shot at it. Good year of practicing for Sundays. Maybe they'll get the job done here and go into the off season in high style, but nonetheless, fantastic. Super happy for Fro. Can't wait to see what tomorrow holds.